go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of Purple Hyacinth, Lunatic Lovers. Now, obviously, they're talking about, you know, Kieran and Lauren, but there's a little <laughs> second interpretation. The chapter, like, kind of, like, pretends to be about two other people, and we'll see who they are. <laughs> so the chapter opens up with our Hollis. We see, again, the castle, lots of purple hyacinths everywhere. And, yeah, I see, now that I see the roof one, there's, like, literally everywhere. <laughs> And we are in front of the police department, the police station. And we have Kim, uh, Will, Lauren, Danny outside. Kim's stretching and she's like, ah, who else is craving watermelon? And here we <laughs> learn she loves watermelon. Will is like, turns into a skeleton and says, this woman is so random. It's, it's like he has, such a tr- he has such trouble with things that don't fit his conceived notions. Like random, <laughs> like what's the wrong, like, what's wrong with random? But like randomness bothers him. He's a, I think he has a hard time with he's very no. scheduled like, like if you interrupt that you interrupt will and like the flow in his brain like instantly stops he's very proper and then you have you know Kim who comes out of here and her shirt is already untucked you know all of it she just she's just letting it all out and like it's the middle of winter basically and she's like watermelon in winter <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just perfect foils for each other um mm-hmm. I'm Vita, by the way um <laughs> Uh, first time I'm on Purple Hyacinth. Um, I do a couple of other podcasts with Mindy on Midnight Poppy Land and um, Asura's Bride. So definitely check those out if you haven't read those comics. Um, I'm a fourth year med student. I'm actually graduating May 7th. So be going pretty soon. Uh, please wish me luck as I am thrown into residency in the middle of a pandemic or at least the tail end of a pandemic. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say for now. And you were also recently matched with your hospital of choice, right? Yeah, so I matched at um, Penn Medicine in Lancaster. They were my number one for family med. Um, so really excited. Come visit me <laughs> at the hospital. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure we'll be hearing about it more since hopefully you'll still be doing podcasts with us if you have time. <laughs> yeah, definitely hope to. I definitely signed up for a couple more. Yep. All right. Okay. So um, their attention seems to be interrupted. And the lighting here is awesome, by the way. It's always awesome. But like you see, you know, their the sun's shining on them while they're underneath like the awning. Really cool. And we see this lady. She is dressed really cool. She, <laughs> she has this awesome <laughs> olive green dress and she has a giant hairdo with a lamp in it. In addition to flowers, it's like a honeycomb style. Like, or like an ice cream, soft serve ice cream, if you prefer that. It is quite the hairdo. And she is making this, you know, dramatic motion. And <laughs> we see she is weeping copiously and her mascara is running and she's screaming, where is my handsome sweet butler? I'm lost without him. <laughs> and for some reason, she has a lit lantern in her hair. Yeah. <laughs> Which reminds Your voice me work on that was, you know, on point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this reminds me my uncle was once on the subway um in new york where I, i'm from and he saw this guy wearing sunglasses but it was nighttime he was like why are you wearing sunglasses in the subway at night and he's like when you're cool the sun always shines on you <laughs> so, lady a is making sure she's always in the spotlight <laughs> oh, she oh that's funny I thought she looked like an anglerfish. <laughs> anglerfish, yes, yes. that's what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> she's like luring her prey to her, because pretty sure she's a cougar. And uh, I'm jumping ahead a couple panels, but I'll let Mindy take it away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, side point on that, that hairdo, um, I'm pretty sure, like, I want to know what her actual hair is, because that's most definitely a wig, but the way those were constructed, mm-hmm. like, back in the, back in the day of Mary Old England and all that, a lot of times it was, like, a cage, and the hair was, like, sh- it was, the bigger the better was the rule, so it was stretched over the cage on top of their head, and it was stuffed with anything. It was stuffed with straw, with, um, old <laughs> clothes, and they would be up there for weeks, and it would stink to high heaven (laughs) which was how these things were and they were stuffed like with whatever they could get their hands on so and then just kind of like pasted together with like the hair over the top like it was not so I wonder how Miss Lady A smells if that's the way she's making her wig she she seems like a fancy lady and at this point I know presumably this is a little later than Elizabeth England it's more like 
I don't know. Maybe they care more about hygiene. Anyway, I don't know. I don't Maybe think about she it. hasn't moved on. Maybe she's stuck. In that yeah. age. The truth is, like, the high hairdo wasn't the. Um, I know they did like Marie Antoinette's time. That was like what late seventeen hundreds. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so also there's a lot of bosom showing. You know, she has a nice ample bosom, which uh, also de rigueur to show that. And she, she's like, "What am I to do? What if something terrible happens to him?" And now we see like Lauren running. She looks like she's the heroine. You know, the sun's on her. She's uh, running to help her out. And <laughs> Lady A's eyes just light up into stars. I think she's an attention seeker in many ways. And she's like, oh, people are validated. You know, like the kind of person who calls the ambulance for every little thing. Cause they're like, oh, I must need attention and I need help. So she's like that only with the police. And she runs to her with her lamp just flailing behind her she's got nice sock stockings too skinny legs but <laughs> and she says good evening my lady and lauren's like can we help you you know <laughs> but then lauren stars were not sorry lady lamp lady stars were actually not for lauren because she rushes past her she screams wah and she slams lauren's face with the lamp and she goes straight to will and she screams help me and she attacks him she basically jumps on him and says, I'm so desperate. I don't know what to do. And just like you said, Vita, she's um, got her eyes on something that is a little not appropriate for her. <laughs> I was just going to point out, I love the water, like the, the tears streaming from her face and the way that they animated that as she's like leaping onto Will. I just think <laughs> it's really well done. Like the intensity and it I just adds to it. I didn't even notice it till now, but yes, <laughs> it's awesome. Oh boy, poor Will. Will is um, not too happy about this lady smothering herself in his chest, basically. And he's like, uh, yeah, yes, of course, uh, my lady, we will help you. What's the matter? Are you looking for someone? Oh my God, she's, okay. She just like leans herself on his chest. She's smudging her mascara all over his beautiful white shirt. I mean, this lady has no sense of propriety at all. Mm -hmm. and yeah and this is already the first time we see her and she starts blushing while looking up at him and she's just looking at his beautiful blue eyes and we get like the, her view from like how she sees it you know he's got these gorgeous blue eyes and there's like little sparkles and feathers floating <laughs> and then she just has these hearts in her eyes and the background is pink and who says dear lord is it her or is it lauren no it's her oh actually no, yeah, it's definitely pointing to Our Lady. Uh, Our Lady is ostensibly smitten with Will, which, given what she says next, yeah. doesn't really make any sense. But she's, uh, you know, he's like, um, and she's like, what? Oh, please excuse me, sir. I was just dazzled by your gorgeous face. And she's, you know, getting in the flirty eyes with looking, you know, great with all the mascara running down. <laughs> And meanwhile, Kim and Lauren are just laughing hysterically. They do not sympathize for poor Will, and who is under attack by this beehive lady. <laughs> beehive. And, you know, here she's like, well, you know, but it's not nearly as handsome as my dear Mr. Butler's, which you would think if she has a dear Mr. Butler, she wouldn't be behaving this way, but okay. <laughs> and then again, you know, she remembers Oh, Mr. Butler, how I miss him. At which point she basically seems to like take Will's neck and throttle him. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, not to give away too much, but this is not appropriate behavior, let's just say. <laughs> at first you think it's hilarious and funny, and it is funny, but at some point you realize it's a step too far. <laughs> in this chapter, I'm totally Kim and Lauren just in the background, dying, pounding the ground. I'd be totally Kim. I would be not supportive yeah. whatsoever. I'd be like, you on your own, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd be the type of situation where, like, obviously you're going to help them, like, a, in a little bit, but it's funny to see them suffer outside of their comfort zone, mm -hmm. and you're totally going to tease them about it, like, weeks and months from now. <laughs> Yeah, she just keeps crying and screaming. She's like, wherever could he be? And like you said, Kim's pounding the floor. Lauren's shaking with laughter. Kim's like, ha ha, I can't. 
and poor Will, he's literally just trying to push her away from his face. And she's like, since you seem to find this situation so funny, Liddell, you'll be in charge of this case and any related paperwork. Which, of course, he throws in the word paperwork because that's like her mortal fear. Oh, boy. And, you know, Kim takes out her pen and paper. She's like, I your orders, my not nearly as handsome lieutenant. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm, she's at least been paying attention to what she's been saying. And then she says, what happened to your butler, my lady? And now she's like, it all began a couple of nights ago. Some athletic vagrants were running all over my roof in the middle of the night. I was very scared, but my sweet, handsome, courageous butler reassured me. <laughs> yep. And she's still choking. Poor Will. Oh, my goodness. What? I feel oh, like... just... Uh... Then what were you saying, Vita? Oh, yeah. There's that one panel when, he, when she was like, he has vanished. I, I get the impression that he she's kind of pushing him away, but also smushing him to her bosom. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. His, his eyes just say it all, the, the panic in his eyes. Yeah, it's pretty gross. I see your expression, Meg. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's basically sexual assault, and, like, we didn't quite realize it at this episode, but it really is. Yeah. And, um... And then she goes, you know, it's interesting enough that she talks about the people running over her roof. And she says, what if it was the purple hyacinth stomping on my ceiling? Which, hmm, yeah. Or this loony talk about, that's two people, right? It sounded like two people. She's like, covers her hands. And then she says, one of them seemed much lighter than the other. Maybe it was even a woman. What if the purple hyacinth has a partner? And at this point, it's like, okay, lady, that is a very strange set of deductions you're coming up with right, right? now. Right? Just jump yeah. from one to the other to the other. And I thought that was just, I couldn't decide when I first read this if it was just for comedic effect, or I was just like, those are some pretty big leaps to make for um, just that somebody's on my roof. When something's on my roof, it's either a raccoon or a squirrel. Like, <laughs> I don't immediately think assassin. <laughs> so I don't know as she she sus to me i feel like it could go either way where she could be like this hidden figure that the authors are just like implanting for us to like know everything and she actually has a really major role like maybe she's the leader of <laughs> the phantom scythe or i i don't know i feel like the other on the other hand too i see her as like a typical societal gossip who just likes to talk and come up with deductions, whether they're right or not. And it could be that because of her astuteness just within society and gossip in general, she maybe she does know the difference between a man versus a woman riding across a roof. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I guess that's kind of how I read it, that it's more that she's a socialite and just likes to gossip and happens to make good astute assumptions sometimes. Also very good, acknowledge. But like in the fandom, in this particular fandom, everything's suspicious. So, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And yeah, we'll we'll keep it to episode uh, this episode. But Lauren's like, oh my gosh, she's just her eyes go wide, and she has like this. I don't know this. Uh, it's it's the photo is like reverse, like the negative image of the photo. <laughs> she's like, mm-hmm. oh god. She's like, ah, uh, uh, or maybe one of the two men is just very skinny. <laughs> oh god and then she's like and what if those uncouth monsters kidnapped my dapper shiny mr butler <laughs> she's tearing at her eyes with her manicured nails and kim's like when's the last time you saw him right and, and we expect like i don't know a day ago a week ago and she says we were walking to a reception and when we turned the corner he, he disappeared it's been almost 10 minutes already <laughs> <laughs> she, she- crying rivers <laughs> oh she is insane she's a who <laughs> <laughs> yeah crazily codependent um i'm not sure how much of it is authentic i don't know i don't know what her deal is but it's weird <laughs> and there's like a crow flying over them and it's like crow, crow, and the sky goes dark and it, you could just like see that they're you know like what? <laughs> and then kim lies just like i promise we're taking this case very seriously my lady and she's just trying not to laugh oh god 
And she just smacks Will across the face by, you know, leaning her hand down. She's like, my despair is bottomless. I need to be at the reception by seven o'clock. What time is it now? And this is a little bit of a, oh God, poor Will's face has like the imprint of her finger, her hand on it. And it's a bit of an expository, like a uh, lead in here because Will asks Liddell, don't you always have that pocket watch with you? What's the time? And Kim's like, oh, I forgot it today. And it's a lie. Kind of woke up in a rush this morning. Ha ha, which is not a lie. And also not surprising. I'm um, like, Kim's probably the kind of person who gets out of bed like five minutes before her shift starts. <laughs> I'm like, just runs, puts clothing on and grabs a muffin as she's running out of the house. <laughs> and she's like, but don't worry, I've got this. And she lifts up her hands towards the sun. You know, the, sh the shadow's shining through it sorry the sunlight's shining through it everybody has become like chibi figures and they're looking at her like what the heck lauren is looking at her kim is looking up at the sun that's shining on her she's like almost and she smiles like that's kim for you I was like Liddell, what are you doing and treating the heavens rock climbing on air imitating a raccoon <laughs> <laughs> she's such a raccoon it's like a spirit animal <laughs> you know, and we have a picture of a raccoon for as a demonstration um, oh, what raccoon looks like? <laughs> I I do have a tip. Um, when you're looking at the skyline, um, you can kind of estimate the time of day if it's like towards the evening by like stretching your hand out like this, and then each finger is 15 minutes, and you line it up with the sun and the horizon. So if you kind of like count your fingers, you can count the amount of hours before sundown, or even minutes. We use that for hiking. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I would not. I'd be the one that'd be telling all the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bring me into the wilderness, but. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I think I'll Google that and see if I can make use of it. <laughs> yeah. I love that how imitating a raccoon was like one of the things on his list. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty random himself. <laughs> I know, right? Trash panda. <laughs> Kim's our trash panda. Lauren just laughs and she's like, shut up. I'm trying to calculate the time of the, with the position of the sun. I've got to concentrate. Poor Will. He's like, who the heck? And Lauren's like, guys. And then we finally hear this voice, Lady Arthingham. And we have this hand and these roses and this gentleman all dressed up, introduced to us with a lot of stars looking very unusual I'm, I'm supposed to say he's the most handsome character in this um in this comic because nobody refuses nobody rec you know wants to acknowledge reality but he's a strange looking fella he's bald yeah. his eyes are set apart he's a giant nose his mustache is sticking out like horizontally uh he's definitely very distinctive let's just say that <laughs> don't forget about the panel in future chapters where they forgot to draw his teeth <laughs> oh my god <laughs> And those are nose hairs, by the way. Like, oh, those are nose hairs. Oh my out. god, those are nose hairs. <laughs> I didn't have to know that. I would rather have gone on without that information. <laughs> you can't unsee it now. Gosh, goodness gracious! I don't think I'm ever looking at him in the face again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But anyway, there's these giant roses, and then we see a sunlit image of her. Her tears are still flowing out of her eyes, but she stops. And their two faces are looking at each other. Their tears are streaming down their face. And there's more rose petals and she just runs. She abandons Will and she's like, my beautiful, handsome butler. I thought I'd lost you forever. And he's reaching out, my lady, my butler. And then they hug while crying. And he just says, my lady, again. And everybody's looking at them like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, God. Oh my God, I can't even look at these two. They're like cradling each other's faces. Yeah, and she yeah, says, yeah. my souls were weeping at the thought of never being rubbed with Brussels Brown friends I sat the cream ever again. <laughs> Why? Oh my God. TMI, people, TMI. I don't even know that. <laughs> but, but the funniest part to think about that, like she's like, I am not born. And just a couple seconds before, she was just throwing herself at Will. Yeah, which is wrong, in my opinion. Like, if you're with your butler in some capacity, which is also, I don't, like, food says that it's, like, in a, like not a great relationship to be, you know, in a relationship with your employee, which, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the relationship is, it's just weird, but yeah, like, don't throw yourself at another guy if you're with someone else. 
Anywho. So she says, I will never abandon. He says, I will never abandon your feet, my graceful lady. Oh, I know. Too much. It's yeah. like he doesn't even care about her. He just cares about her feet. I think that's a very specific type of relationship. Oh God. No, 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 no. Okay. We're, anyway, they walk away in hearts. It's great. We're never thinking about them again for the next few minutes. <laughs> next couple episodes. <laughs> And they're just left dumbfounded. Kim is uh, a little more fast on her feet and to see the humor in the situation. And she's like, oh, looks like case is closed. So, Sluffer, what about it? <laughs> I mean, Will and Lauren just smack their faces because they are overcome. They cannot handle anything else. <sighs> so she's like, hi, let's go. This calls for celebration. And she's like, oh my God, hot watermelons again. Don't be a killjoy, Will. And Lauren um, approaches Kim and she's like, wait, Kim, let me guess. The side pocket on the right, huh? And Kim says, you mean my watch? That's not fair. I'm not going to play this game with you. Even if I had lied, you know. So again, mm -hmm. like more affirmation that Kim knows about Lauren's ability and that Lauren knows about her pocket watch. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. So... She says, um, Kim says to Will, hurry up, Grandpa, or we'll leave you behind. And that's the end of that scene. Now we go into the next scene. It's later at night. It is 6, 7, 7.30? right? No, 7.30. <laughs> Sorry, people. Me and my time reading skills. So it's around 7.30. This, um, you know, it's dusk time. It looks like they're at like a station, train station or something. And we see someone walking um, and they have a gun in their hands, which they are now pressing, right? I don't know gun terms, but they're pressing the trigger or like pre-cocking it or something. I don't know. I don't know what the gun terms are, but it's Kim and she's aiming her gun and shooting um, at targets. And she's getting that exactly in the head um, multiple times, like just again and again. And she has this grim set to her mouth, which she usually does not have. She's usually very, you know, bubbly and happy, but she has a downturn to her mouth in over here. And we have a date flashing across the screen, November 14th, blank, blank, 17. And Art Hollis was November 16th, right? The, the, the train station bombing it was the 16th. No, but don't quote me. Yeah, let me quickly look at the, oh, never mind. It's going to take a while to find it. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it was the 16th. Just ask the Discord. It'll be back in like two seconds. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's, I think it's the 16th. I'm not going to spend time looking for it. And she again does bang, bang, shoots the target again. And now we have a time, 124, 48 seconds. And more Kim just looking angry, looking, you know, aiming, again, shooting, getting, like, just blowing this, like, model or whatever, this brains out, like, the entire head area is getting obliterated. And she, you know, stops, takes some time to huff, puts the gun down, and the last one you see has kind of not hit the target. Has it been the last one before? Oh, no, yeah, she already did that before. And at this point, she, you know, says, and she takes out a pocket watch, looks at it, and we see she opens it up, closes it, and says, time never turns back, does it? And that's the end. What's interesting, too, just about that sequence, it looks like the it's not the date that necessarily phases her. Obviously, it has a lot of meaning, but the next panel after the date itself she's still shooting through that hole that she makes with the bullets but then when you get to the time something more specific more intimate that she likely associates directly with like likely the death of someone that she really cared about that's when she misses and that's when she gets emotional and you know makes a mistake so we know more about this watch because we've read later episodes, but we can't say more. So we'll just keep it to what we know here. But yeah, definitely this watch is associated with that time and date. 
Mm. And it must be something special to her because she keeps it on her all the time. And her intensity emotionally in this scene, I get two things from it. Either she felt has the same kind of feelings as Laura did, Lauren does as she was, she could have stopped something, but she didn't. Or on the other side of things, she knew she couldn't have, but she wishes, I wish I would have been in that. There, there's some regret either that she um, could have been there and wasn't, or there was no way she could have been there either way, but she's like, I can shoot, I can shoot a bullseye now and I couldn't then, why can't I go back and change it and make it different? Like there's regret either, either side. It's one of those two things, yeah. um, which might be one of the reasons why she's so passionate about the shooting range. Maybe she's like, I could have made things different, but I could, but I didn't. I think it definitely, there's a lot of parallel between her and Lauren and yeah, she has this um, aloof, really airy and fun loving type of personality, but underneath there is something really dark that we just don't really know about. And I think the fact that Lauren and Kim have an understanding, um, you know, about each other's past just speaks volumes to the type of relationship that they have, because yeah, they are they are parallels for each other. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that they can understand each other, and in many ways they're different, but yeah, they do have seem to share yeah. that same background with that they can relate to. So, Vita, do you want to tell us what you know from your previous reading of the Canvas version of this yeah. chapter? So, originally, they killed off the handsome butler, and those were tears of grief. Yeah. He was, like, actually dead? Like, they he found him dead. dead? He was one of the victims. And she's like, oh, my handsome butler, where is he? And then they find his corpse, and it's very sad. <laughs> Victim of what? Like, who killed him? um I don't remember <laughs> if I if I reread some of the earlier chapters I don't think it was um Kieran but I think it was someone else it was the other it was an assassin I don't remember I wish I did <laughs> but no he did he was so dead we can assume from this that the butler is not the leader probably <laughs> <laughs> probably not sure <laughs> yeah lady a can still be the leader with there's it's funny because even then the authors like absolutely adored the handsome butler like i was like you killed him off though <laughs> okay so i think they definitely did that intentionally um leaving him more alive so that everyone else can appreciate his personality and then i don't <laughs> this is just me um so every now and then i'll go in the shops and see what kind of merchandise like might some of my favorite authors have um there was a shower curtain with God. just the face of the handsome oh. butler going for $150. And the description was like, this is a joke or something, just a hack, just to see who'll buy this. I'm pretty sure it was sold as well. Oh my God. $150 for a handsome oh. butler shower curtain. <laughs> okay. Some of the other characters shower curtain. Yeah, I can see that. But like <laughs> Butler. Oh god. Oh my goodness. I don't I'm have the theories, nervous. but I have some other things for you. <laughs> okay. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> goodness gracious. We're we're being a little dramatized right now. <laughs> can you imagine getting in a shower? Like no. taking off your clothes? <laughs> no. Why did you have to be so explicit? We were all thinking it, but we didn't have to say it. Oh. Oh. <sighs> wait wait what about no I can't That's say it, Can I say it? <laughs> butler pajama <laughs> wait sure it can get worse but I'm not gonna get worse I'm not gonna get worse I mean I'll I know keep what it you're civilized. thinking though I know what yeah, you're thinking sorry. <laughs> everyone when you when you listen to this episode type in the comments what am I thinking <laughs> <laughs> no. honestly I was thinking socks oh okay that's fine I can see socks I can see socks with a uh, little Brussels spout sprouts for the toes. Oh my God. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. We can make it. We can make a pH cookbook and we have to have Brussels sprouts cream recipe. <gasps> Brussels, this is produce Brussels sprouts creams and ice cream. Well, this is later. Sorry, but Brussels sprouts cream. We should make that. Yeah. We're, we're, we're cream too. Why not? 
Uh, along with how to make Lauren's favorite meal, and it's just like a blueberry. <laughs> a blue here's a blueberry bush planted in your yard. <laughs> yeah. And then watermelon for Kim. Yeah. yeah. Very simple. Well. Ingredient number one: watermelon. And that's it. <laughs> <sighs> this is a crackhead chapter, though. Yes. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> 